Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Um, I'm Christian, I work at Bitmove and everything codec related. And um, yeah, I have a talk. First disclaimer is, um, this is nothing that anybody ever had a problem with. This is gonna be something, but it's still gonna be really cool, I promise. So, um, I had this idea about a while ago, right? So my idea was to um, take a view of the decoder um, and, and, and misuse it a tiny bit to like produce art with it, like to reveal the art that we can reproduce using just the decoder and the tools that are in there. That's the basic idea. So the, the main hook of this talk is, what is a video decoder, right? And then we can go down the technical route. We can say, well, video decoder is a unit that gets a bit stream and then it decodes some frames and then you can show those frames using some sort of frame displaying device and that's it. And then you can, of course, open the box of the decoder and then there's gonna be a bunch of stuff in there. It's gonna be like coding loops, loop filters, it's all sorts of technical things in there. There's entropy coding, quantization, there's other technologies in there. You can go more abstract. There's uh, the theories of entropy, signal theory, transformation, and filtering is gonna happen in the decoder, right? There's a lot of math involved. There's some things in there where nobody really knows how it works or like at the first view, you don't know. And if you ever worked with codecs, you know there are so many acronyms, right? It's crazy. All right, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna do that, right? So if you, wanna, if you wanna get more details, head over to YouTube and look for Christian Feldman Video Coding Basics. You can watch me for 40 minutes talking about just the surface of it all, right? Um, in this talk, I wanna take a different approach to looking at the decoder, right? So what is a decoder? Again, from the start. A decoder essentially is a highly optimized painting unit, right? It's painting frames and outputting them. And how does he do that? Well, he gets instructions. There's a certain set of instructions that he's executing in order to paint something. And those instructions are encoded into the bitstream, right? So the decoder just reads the bitstream, gets the instructions, executes them, and that's it, right? And the job of the encoder is, of course, he knows what the decoder will do, what instructions he supports. And the job of the encoder is to create a bitstream that uses all of these um, instructions to paint something that is as close to an original as possible, right? But what if we don't wanna be as close to an original as possible, but we wanna use these instructions to paint something cool instead, right? going from the different approach. And there's two things that every decoder has. In this case, I'm using H.264, um, that every decoder has, and I, I wanna produce some art with these uh, decoder tools that the decoder can use. Okay, the first one is gonna be intra-prediction, right? So if you don't know, intra-prediction is a tool that can, like in video coding, every time we're doing, there's always a two-step process. For every macro block, we're doing a prediction using the information that we already decoded, and then we're encoding an error signal, like how wrong were we, right? And both of those go into the uh, bitstream, and then we continue with the next block. That's the coding loop over and over again until we decoded a frame. And one of the tools is directional intra-prediction, um, and that is using like the boundary pixels, here the gray ones, um, to predict the white, pic uh, the, the white pixels here in the middle. And essentially it's just extrapolating the information um, alongside a certain direction and the direction isn't fixed, it can be flexible. It depends on the codec which directions are allowed in the bitstream or which, which directions the decoder can use. But this sounds like an optimal like something to paint with, right? And that is actually the first thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain. So um, we have to take a tiny look at the encoder side to understand like what I changed, right? So this is how a typical encoder looks like. Somewhere in there, there is this intra-prediction search unit, which is taking the original and these boundary pixels that have already been decoded, and it's searching through all of the options that he has, right, and he determines which is the best one. And then the best one is encoded into the bitstream in the bottom here, right? But that is, that is yeah, that, that's not what I wanna do here. What I did is I replaced that unit with a, uh, like an intra-direction generation unit. It's just making up intra-directions from thin air. It's not looking at the original, it's just making up stuff and writing it into the bitstream. That also means that it doesn't need the original anymore, or the boundary pixels. We don't need that, right? We can remove that. Um, and then the, the loop up here is the loop I talked about, right? That is the one that is encoding this error signal on top. Um, but we wanna paint with the intra stuff, right? We don't want to encode an error signal. So instead of doing that, let's just write zeros into the bitstream instead which also means we don't need this quantization transformation, the difference, and we don't even need the original anymore. It doesn't matter, right? And this is what our encoder collapses into. It's just generating intro directions and encoding no residual signal, and that's it, into the bitstream. And then we put that into a decoder and see what it does. And uh, yeah, enough technical talk. Let's go to my intra-vernissage, the first part of this. 
Um, something that I, that I didn't tell about so far is, of course, we're doing prediction from information. So we need some information in the system, right? Um, if we're just predicting from a black frame, we will always get a black frame. So that's boring. Um, so what I'm actually doing is, so the first line of macro blocks here is encoded completely normally using X264, just the norm completely normal row of macro blocks. And then for the rest of the macro blocks, the black ones here, I'm just going to write these intra predictions into the, into the bitstream and see what happens. All right, so first, um, intra mode down. So this is what happens, just all of the, all of the directions are pointing down. Um, what else can we do? Well, um, there's a 45 degree mode. For chroma, it's like doing this cool, um, cool, cool blockiness effect. That's also kind of nice. Uh, the directions ha don't have to be the same for luma and chroma. They can also be different, which is also kind of cool. Um, we can also make these uh, directions dependent on like X positions, for example, right? Going into different directions. Um, we can write completely random data in there, right? Random directions. Um, it's kind of interesting. You can still see that the general information flows like diagonally down, right, on average. Um, and then here's just for a different input. This is also looking kind of cool. And uh, this is, this is kind of my, my favorite image so far, which I produced with this. It's, um, yeah, just a different input on the top. And one point is that, of course, encoding just these intra directions is super cheap, right? So this is a 1080p image, and the file size is like 4,000 bytes. That's it for this image. And I didn't even optimize that. You can probably get it even further down, right? So just by using these decoder tools to reproduce images. All right. That was intra prediction, so just still images. But uh, a decoder can do more, right? A decoder can decode like 20, 30, 60 frames per second for us. And can we also use that to produce some cool stuff? Um, so for this, um, yeah, of course, I'm, I'm using uh, motion compensation, right? So inter prediction. And uh, so I set up the encoder to produce like an IPPPP infinite P configuration. So the first frame I'm, co I'm encoding completely normally, X264, just an in intra frame as you would. But for all of the following P frames, I'm just putting a uh, artificially generated motion vector field in there. And I'm again encoding no residual signal. That's again the same approach, right, as before, just this time with motion compensation. Um, what is motion compensation? Well, motion compensation, you're taking, you're again doing a prediction, but this time we're doing it from a reference frame that already has been decoded, right? And for the blue block here that we want to predict, uh, we're just going to the corresponding block in the reference, then we're moving it according to a motion vector, we're copying whatever is below that place, and then we're copying it to our current block. That is the motion prediction, right? So it's very efficient to move stuff around in images. And that, of course, we can also use to like generate some cool, cool stuff on the screen. And uh, yeah, so the second part of this is the my interior vernissage. So moving pictures um, again generated. So uh, just first, if you're watching at home or you're watching like through the live stream or YouTube later, uh, this is probably going to look horrible if it's going through another round of compression, right? So all, for everybody in the room, please go to this URL where I'm hosting all of these bit streams. They're all standard compliant H.264 bit streams, right? So you can just open them on your phone and your hardware decoder in your device will generate some art for you. Um, and uh, yeah, but let's look at some of the bit streams. So uh, as I said, so this is the first, first image that I'm encoding, right? This is the image that I'm starting off from. And then, um, so if I hit play now, it should, uh, um, I just put the artificially generated bit streams into PowerPoint, right? If I hit play, the PowerPoint should just generate the art live for us. Let's see if that works. Um, I think it does. Yes, something is happening. So this was one of my first tests. For every block and every frame, I'm just moving down uh, each block by one quarter of a pixel. And this is what happens. So it's kind of like smearing. It's doing these like weird um, weird artifacts. I'm also not entirely sure why these artifacts appear. Maybe it's some Maybe it's the motion uh, compensation filter that's being applied over and over again to the same information. I'm not entirely sure, right? This is what it's about. It's just an exploration of what happens. All right, next, um, yeah, we just, we just have a motion vector field that's rotating around a center circle, which is also producing some like cool effects, right? With a, there's like a patterns appearing in the, in the corners and everything. It's also really cool. Um, yeah, next, I have an example where just all of the motion vectors are pointing inwards. All of the time. Um, and again, right, so just coding these static motion vector fields into the bitstream is super cheap. 
So the bit rate of this bit stream is about 30 kilobits or something per second, smaller than an audio stream, right? It's 1080p. Um, also really cool effects happening here. Um, another one just doing like a sine wave, painting a, a picture actually from the left, which is also really interesting. And um, yeah, and, and lastly, um, I did, yeah. You, you can go to the link, there's some more examples on there. Uh, this is just a motion vector fields generating using paleo noise, also looking really cool. And uh, yeah, um, that, that was it. <laughs> As I said, nothing, not, not a problem that anybody ever had, but this was just a different approach to <laughs> like misusing the decoder to produce something cool. And uh, yeah, I hope you liked it, and that was it. Thank you. <laughs>